seriously, that was a piece of cake. As I hate injections, that I didn't even was, feel that. It kind of reminded me of the pinch I had when I placed the Freestyle Libre on my arm. I'll put a link down below to that. Hey everyone, it's Dr. Rick, founder of Herbal411.com. Today's yeah. tutorial is on how to cut your appetite using repurposed medicines. In the last decade, there's been great discoveries on medicines to help lower hemoglobin A1C, that's the three-month glucose test, fasting glucose, insulin for my patients because that's what I follow, in addition to cravings. Now before all we had was metformin, sulfonylureas, piglotazone, which I never liked, and then insulin. There's no problems with insulin. It is a useful thing. It has to be injected. The problem with insulins is that although it will lower your blood glucose level, it also causes weight gain which doesn't seem to support diabetes in the long run. And that's what this has to be, sustainable practice of medicines, herbs, lifestyle, exercise, and that will support you now and support you long term. Most of the people that have T2D, diabetes type 2, are found to have dysfunction with secreting of insulin and or what the pancreas does to help modulate how you dispose of glucose. You need insulin, which is a hormone, and everybody demonizes it, but it's actually a very helpful hormone. But you need that to get glucose into cells. All cells of the body need insulin except for muscle. And that's why I always encourage my patients to exercise aggressively, even if it means walking. And this is my weight vest, which I'll talk about later. The objective with exercise is to lower glucose. Lifestyle changes in the form of nutrition, exercise, sleep, and stress neutralization, and ultimately weight or waistline control. When those measures don't seem to pan out, and they usually have to be personal designed by a trainer or your physician and if you can't find a physician and you can't afford a trainer consider coming to see me I'll put my website link down below I give integrative medicine consults for people all over the world and I'd like to say that my approach is different than the average physician because of my love for exercise my love for experimenting especially with nutrition and my training as an integrative medicine primary care doctor so medicines can be useful I know a lot of my subscribers and patients like to go the supplement route or the natural route I honor that and I practice that. But sometimes when we've invested, put in the sweat and put in the suffering, but still in blood testing and body weight metrics, nothing seems to be moving. It's very defeating and demotivating to continue on. And when I notice that in my patients, it's time to deploy other options just for a short amount of time. I love self-experimenting and I do it because I want to see what my patients are going through. So today I'm going to be doing an ozempic shot. What I used to do would be to just deploy topiramate or Entrave as far as decreasing appetite. And with some of my patients, just decreasing appetite will be enough to get them past the hump with noticeable changes after their invested exercise nutrition to invest in a new lifestyle. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes just cutting back on the appetite isn't good enough, and that's where these repurposed medicines will come in handy. So typically with diabetes medicines, they are meant to lower glucose. When you lower serum glucose, you cause less damage to the lining of the blood vessels. Let me explain that. When you eat a solid food or a liquid food. It goes into the esophagus, into the stomach. The stomach breaks it down with acid. When that food particle is broken down into its basic elements, amino acids, fats, or carbohydrates, then they cross the stomach membrane and they get into the blood vessels termed the portal circulation. Those specific blood vessels take whatever nutrients you just digested and absorbed into the liver and the liver processes those nutrients. After the liver processes the nutrients, then it sends it out into the bloodstream to feed different areas of the body body, brain, heart, bone, muscle, glands. It is very important to realize that if you eat nothing but say sugar or carbohydrate, especially highly processed carbohydrates, it has that food product gets broken down, placed into the portal circulation, and then it's carried to the liver. The liver will see that and try to detoxify it before sending it off anywhere, especially fructose, for example. That's a useless sugar and the liver immediately recognizes it. When the liver starts to assimilate way too much carbohydrate or fructose, then it attempts to protect the rest of the body by stuffing that bad product into its own cells, making every liver cell fatty. Thus the reason why you get fatty liver disease, or NAFLD, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. 
which can be very dangerous if you let it advance to non-alcoholic steatohepatitis or worse, hepatocellular carcinoma. But bottom line, even if you have taken yourself away from the standard American diet and you're trying keto or you're trying intermittent fasting, you're trying carnivore, which I just did a video on, sometimes people need a little bit of help. So as an integrative medicine physician, I have this option to deploy any of these medicines. Just as a disclaimer, this is not a medicine. This is what I used to eat back in the 90s when I first started doctoring. This is a steak, egg, and cheese bagel from McDonald's. And these are the 10 packs of sugar that I used to put in the McDonald's coffee. Because I thought I was bulletproof, I was running, I was training and I thought, I have the wiggle room to afford eating this crap. And believe it or not, this is from 2011. And look at that, it is now 2022. Yeah. That's amazing that a fast food company can make that stay alive for 11 years. But can you imagine what that does to your body? So back to my presentation. My suggestion is, especially if you're a patient of mine, and you can be a patient on Herbal 411, just hit the link for a new patient consult and we can start making positive changes to your lifestyle. I have deployed off-label use of a lot of these to help with appetite suppression and weight loss. So I'm not gonna get into the mechanisms of how SGLT inhibitors or GLP-1 agonists work, but I'll see if I can put some links to better explain what those two families are for diabetics and people who want to lose weight. If you are a type 2 diabetic, these two families of medicines have helped patients lower the basal glucose levels in addition to the hemoglobin A1c values. And I'd also like to say that the off-label results of losing weight will also help you lower LDL cholesterol. And some of these medicines have been used for heart failure by cardiologists. So even the cardiologists are using these medicines off-label. So that just tells you it's up to the physician to think in a very personalized approach what would best serve you as a patient with excellent benefits and very low side effects. What I'm going to be doing this time is starting Ozempic, which is a subcutaneous injection once a week, and combining it with this Prolon box. Prolon is a five-day dietary supplement that is produced by El Nutri the founder of which is Volter Longo, who did research in the benefits of a fasting mimicking diet. For those of you who have tried Prolon or tried initiating a fasting mimicking diet, is the first couple of days suck because your body's very used to what you've been doing before. If you get satisfaction from highly processed carbohydrates or sugar, when you take them away from your body, your brain's gonna react in a violent way to make you hunt for more carbohydrates and sugar. And let's face it, most of us overeat for the activities that we do. And yes, it has to be combined. Even if you're disabled when you have decreased activities, but you indulge in high caloric intake, also known as gluttony in the Bible, your body's gonna have to process that somehow, and then you're gonna have to store all the extra stuff. And that's what leads to weight gain, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and diabetes, which manifests later on as cancer, heart attack, and stroke. As I mentioned before, this is my weight vest. I use it for exercise. I am training for a big backpacking hike in 2023. Those of you who like nature or outdoors, please see my link to Dr. Rick hiking excursions. But for the purposes of this video, this is 40 pounds, and I have patients that lose this weight just with doing the shot once a week. I can tell you that because these medicines bypass your normal metabolism and get you what I think is a cheat to lose weight, there may be some side effects that we have to watch out for. And one of the side effects is that you lose so much of your appetite that some people forget to eat. And forgetting to eat, eh, you'll pay for it on your own, but forgetting to drink, that's gonna be a problem. And honestly, it's not your classic injection where you stick this huge needle into your muscle. It's a subcutaneous pre-mixed shot. I'll do it today just to show you that it's super easy with hopefully very low side effects. But just in case, I think having Zofran, which is a nausea pill, and you don't have to have it, but it's nice to deploy in case you start to get the side effects of nausea. Typically with Ozempic, you start out at 0.25 and you build your way up to about 2.4 milligrams weekly. If you honestly have positive effects with controlling your appetite and losing weight, then I would maintain that dose at the level you experience success. To use this as an accent to your lifestyle change or a cheat to accelerate your success, 30 to 60 days is fair. And most of my patients that I provide lifestyle change for will usually lose about 15 to 20 pounds. Getting into the 40 pound mark is hard without a medicine. I have seen some people in weight loss clinics use it long term. In fact, there is a newer medicine that just got released that's supposed to work better than semaglutide, but the pharmaceutical company has already put a warning on it saying once you start, you cannot stop, which is the bottom line. No matter what you choose, lifestyle always has to be first and then medicines or supplements second. Bariatric surgery sometimes is necessary too to keep you alive. And I think that was the argument with that new medicine. It's better than having surgery, but again, we don't know the price just yet. Let's do this shot. Okay, everybody. So this is Ozempic. I got this from a patient of mine. It is 0.25 milligrams, and that's all we want. That's the starting dose. Let's open this up. 
There's the box. This is the pen. And if you see, you can turn up the dial to 0 0.25. So you have to take these needles out, pick up one. It's already sterile. So you take off this tab, put your needle on the end of the pen. After taking off the cap, you take off the needle hub and you put the needle on the skin that you just sterilized and press. And that's it. That is simple as hell. Uh, you're not supposed to recap needles, but I have no choice. I got to put this cover back on then put the thing on again. Take this off and dispose of the needle in sterile fashion. And there you go. I'll save this for the next one. I don't know if you heard that. I put it to 0.25 and then when I stuck it in, I clicked it and you can hear it spin back. As it was spinning back to zero, it was injecting the medicine into my thigh. It is now subcutaneous and I'm good for the week. So that was not too bad. I can do that once a week. I did a video once on injections subcutaneously for testosterone and I just, I'm a wimp. I don't like giving myself shots. I don't have a problem with giving a lot of tubes of blood. I do a lot of self-experimenting to see if my lifestyle change changes any of the metrics on my blood tests. But giving myself a shot, I am such a wimp. And this was a piece of cake. So hopefully this gives you guys a couple of options. Even my natural patients, don't be afraid of trying to deploy some of these things, but we have to do it in a very smart manner with an ultimate endpoint to say, we don't need this medicine anymore. Keep on with lifestyle change. Again, for those of you who don't have a doctor that will help you, please consider seeing me virtually or in my Hoffman Estates office to help start planning how to get you past your speed bump and onto the road of healthy lifestyle. If you've used these medicines in a successful way to make lifestyle change, meaning lower weight, lower waistline, decrease your BMI, increase your muscle mass, please put them in the comment section down below and consider sharing this with your friends or family who are on the verge of manifesting bad disease. And don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Otherwise, I'll see you at the next one.